It is a Tippling Tuesday in lockdown. And I do like Tippling Tuesdays. Now, you know, while everything is pretty much stopped out there in the real world, the mail hasn't stopped. No, the Postal Service, through rain and snow, sleet, hail, coronavirus. It's all good. This is actually from FedEx. But our fine friends at Impex Beverages sent me an email last week announcing some new stuff, uh, a few Port Eskeg expressions, and a whole bunch of stuff from the single malts of Scotland. And it arrived today. It arrived like maybe three days after I emailed them. So wow. I was pretty ple- I was pretty happy. No, and I and I divvied it up following all the protocols. Bottles were cleaned and sterilized. You know, everything gone to an undisclosed location, the Dropbox site, which may or may not be the fence between our houses. Everything's safe, all protocols. You're back in the land of lost toys. I am. Well, and I still have my murder table. So what we have is a Port Eskeg aged 18 years. I'll read a little bit about the Port Eskeg. The story of Port Eskeg. Port Eskeg is a range of Isla single malt whiskeys that embodies the unique spirit of Isla and its people. Nestled into the north coast of the island, Port Eskeg has been the gateway to Isla for hundreds of years. It seemed right to name our whiskey after this magical place. While there is no distillery at Port Eskeg, it gives us the opportunity to specially select casts from the distilleries around Isla and create a variety of expressions. Now, this particular one, the 18-year-old expression, apparently it's a USA exclusive, according to the um, according to the documentation, and it's a single cask, 250 bottles. So an exclusive single cast distilled in 2000 and aged for over 18 years in an ex-bourbon barrel. This single malt from the northeast shore of Isla is brimming with seaside flavors and a sweetness that glides over the palate like an ocean breeze. Bottled at natural strength, 50.8% ABV. So let's do a little pouring. All right. Virtual cheers, right? Cheers. Chang chang, yes. clinky clinky. So I think all all roads lead to Kalila on this one, right? Is that what we're well, guessing? I I think uh, definitely this one is probably a Kalila. From their little map on the back of their brochure, the only two up in the area that qualifies as northeast would be Bunahaben and and uh, Kalila. So this is peated. Mm-hmm. This was a bourbon cask. Is that what they said? Yeah, it's bourbon, uh, bourbon. Yeah, it's got that nice the, color too. Uh, maybe a little darker than a typical Kalila, maybe. Um, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, maybe we about the same. I don't honestly. I, I know we discussed this when we reviewed the other Kalila, the one from Barry Brothers and Rudd. We don't get a lot of like the regular distillery bottlings from Kalila here. Right. Beyond the twelve, and maybe every once in a while there's a distiller's edition, but I haven't had any of those. Would you say this is honey? Oh, it's, uh, I don't know. I think it's kind of, I think it's like 20, 20, 22 karat gold. That's what I'm going with. It's got a golden color. It doesn't really go towards the amber. And for a 50.8, I'm not getting a lot of vapors. No, me neither. I'm I'm getting the peat and and a little bit of the brine. Are you, are you breathing with your, with your mouth open? You know, I can't do that. I don't know. Physically, I'm unable to do it. I've tried. I feel like I close my mouth every time I breathe in. Yeah. I think it's just, I'm not sure what's wrong with me. Old habits die hard. I'm not getting as much medicinal off of this. I get like a light smokiness to it. Maybe a little bit of, um, maybe, a, maybe a little, um, what do you call it, like briny? Yeah, that's what I'm getting. I'm getting the brine. Really not much in the way of vapors at all for a 50.8. No, no. I mean, there's a little bit of a singe, but that's because my nose is pretty much in the glass. But it's not, it's not too, it's not really super vapory. No. Maybe it's the age. Do you think it's the age? Maybe. That, that maybe just suppresses the, that yeah. and it needs to just kind of open up a little bit? Or maybe it's just the other flavors take over. That there's it's more depth to these that you get a little more of the the brine and the peat. Yeah, maybe I don't know, but I mean they don't say whether it's first fill, second fill, whatever it is. Yeah, it's just just says ex bourbon. So, but I don't think the bourbon cast ones get that dark, do they? I don't think so. Unless they so. again, and maybe take them to a higher char or something. Would you um would you would you get some uh like apples or pears out of this maybe too? Yeah, I can see that. There's, there's like a light fruitiness to it. There's a there's a sweetness to it. There's some like herbally notes, maybe a little um, mint or maybe a little licorice. Yeah, but, but no citrus, right? I'm not getting any citrus? No, nah, no, I'm not getting any citrus on this. And, 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 and none of the like the tropical fruits. No. Good, I'm just hey. checking. Sometimes I think maybe I'm having a stroke while I'm doing these. Well, you I'm probably are. Things no one else does. Uh, here's, here's the question though. How would you be able to tell the difference? That is true. 
All right, I'm, I'm going in. All right, me too. Mm. Not too thick. No, it may be a little, it may be um, gentle and sweet on the nose, but it's got a nice little kick to it. Yeah, it's a kick in the teeth. That's it nice. Gets, it's, it's all right around the middle. It's right That's like nice. mid-palate here. I like you know, that. I get, I get a, it's like a lightly peppery. I'm not going to say cinnamon. It's more like a light, like black pepper. Yeah. And then you get the peat, which is like a, a mm. good pipe tobacco or maybe some leather. It's good. That's nice. That is very, very delicious. And again, I hate, yeah. I hate you. But it's peppery. There might be, I might get a, I get a little vanilla. There's some like, maybe like a powdered sugar. I wouldn't say it's a dark sugar. It's not like it's like, you know, like a sherry cask like that. No, nah, it's more like the powder donut. Yes, mm, donuts. Mm, with the, with donuts. The, a McMillan's with the vanilla. Oh, they're so good. Bad. Something like that, a little creaminess. You know, maybe, hang on a second, let me go back in. Not as rich as that Berry Brothers and Rub we tried. This tastes a little more mellow, like a little more a little more on the mellow side. Yeah, I, I, I just think they're different. They're just so different. I think they this are. has a lot more... Um, of like the peppery heat and the uh, and the, mm-hmm. the peat, the Berry Brothers are very balanced. I mean, it really was, but I think this has a little bit more oomph to it. You know, now I, I get a little bit of the tobacco on the back end. It's starting to yeah. come through now. It's almost like ashy. Yeah, that's what I said, like like a pipe tobacco. Yeah. Yeah, but like but like the cigar, like yeah. or maybe like a cigar, like not not so much the cigar, but the ash. Yeah. Not that I go eating ash, but you know what I mean. That smell you got. Yeah, I don't think people should be ashing stuff out on you. That's not right. Mm-mm. I shouldn't be a human ashtray. Is that what you're saying? If you, unless you're asking them to, and I think that makes no. sense. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. Okay. All right, that went oh, dark. Oh, oh, huh. Never mind. That went, that went dark. a little dark. Okay. Um, I may go back to it just one more time. I, I'm a little, you know, sad we started with this tonight because this might be uh, the, the top winner. That's, you know, you start with an A. That's, I well, think that's an A. Why can't they all be A's? I think that's an A. Well, not yeah. a, what are you, the easiest grader ever? That, uh, <laughs> no, I'm not, actually. That's a, that's, that's a definite A. That's good. That is a very, very good whiskey. I would go like 90, 91 on this. Yeah, yeah I think so. That's very, very nice. That's, that's a 90, nice. that's an A. That's good. Hmm. Delicious. It's a shame I shared it with you because now I don't have any more. <laughs> yeah, I know we're all out. Yeah, uh, well, that's okay. It's a shame I shared it with you. That's I know, because nice. I want I want more. That's, I want more whiskey. Damn it. That's really nice. Ah, uh, well, I'm a nice guy. And with only 250 bottles, you know, it's doubtful we'll see one here on the U.S. side, right? No. Well, it says it's a U.S. exclusive. I don't know. Right. Unless, yeah, you know. That, that goes into the big cities. It doesn't come down to slower New Jersey. I, I think maybe we can make a call. What do you think? You think we know a guy? Uh, maybe. Maybe if we want it bad enough. So, yes, really very nice, nice whiskey. Really nice. I'm going 90, 91. Uh, I, concur. I concur. I think if it, was a little, if it was a little thicker, maybe, like a little more viscosity to it, I might go a little higher. But as it is, it, it's solid. It's very good. I'm, I'm really starting to like Khalil a lot because we've been having yeah. a good bit of it lately. Yeah, it, it really checks all the boxes. I mean, it's got everything you want. It's really good. It does. It's got, it does. It's got depth. It's got a finish. It's got full flavor. Mm-hmm. And like you said, it's a little thin on the mouthfeel, mm-hmm. but besides that, I mean, it's hard to knock it. It's good. It really yep. is. It's very nice. Well done. So thank you to the fine folks at Impex for sending this along and cheers to you, sir, for surviving another week of lockdown. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> that is it. Peace.